Hold still, fit must be precise. Hi, I'm Tim Travis from Xbox Reviews and Verdicts, and today I'm reviewing Dishonored from Bethesda in Arcane Studios. Dishonored is an ambitious first-person stealth action game that promises a unique world, multiple ways to play, and differing outcomes for different players. All of this adds up to Dishonored being one of the most anticipated UIPs in recent memory. So what's the verdict? Let's find out. Passing off. We're away. Dishonored is set in Dunwall, a rapidly industrializing city home to a rampant plague. You play as Corvo Atano, a name that might be more appropriate in the Star Wars universe, but he is nonetheless the bodyguard of the Empress and has a strong connection with her daughter, Emily Coldwin. It isn't long until the Empress is murdered, Emily is kidnapped, and you are framed for the incident. I'll see you beheaded for this, Corvo. After escaping imprisonment, you join the Loyalists, the resistance against the tyrannical leaders responsible for your downfall. Ultimately, the Loyalists' goal is to crown the rightful heir to the throne, Emily Caldwin, as Empress. However, you do most of the legwork by assassinating key leaders of the corrupt regime. There really isn't anything terribly wrong with the plot, even those story elements like the fact that Dunwall is powered by whale oil and the outsider, the figure who grants you supernatural powers, are underutilized and the ending of the game comes rather abruptly. However, while I won't deny the voice actor's talent, but all the characters sound rather low-key. It's not very expressive or glum or morose in a way that complements a sense of hopelessness. This isn't helped by the fact that Corvo is a silent protagonist. Basically, there aren't any truly standout personalities, with the possible exception of Granny Rags. Oh, the dear things must be starving without their granny. Here, birdies. Here. At least the city of Dunwall is a wonderful setting for the game. There's certainly a historical England feel here, and while the game isn't cell shaded there's definitely a hint of an exaggerated art style. You can further tell this with the exaggerated character models, which is a contrast to the modest voice acting. Fans of Half-Life 2 will also notice Dunwall has a resemblance to City 17, as the older architecture contrasts with the coming age of industrialization and militarism. This makes sense since the visual design director of Dishonored also contributed to Valve's masterpiece. While from a technical perspective, Dishonored might not be quite as good as other games using the Unreal Engine, namely Gears of War 3, but this is more than made up for by the art direction. Dishonored is a stealth action game. You control Corvo like you would a first person shooter, but you have the typical stealth abilities like peeking around corners, crouching to stay hidden and make less noise, carrying bodies, and asphyxiating enemies. The usual tools of the trade. But this doesn't mean you have to avoid bloodshed. You almost always have a sword in your right hand, and the combat using this is quite good. While you can't use heavy attacks like you might expect, duels are fun, and successfully parrying an enemy's blow and following up with the game's brutal first-person kill sequences is satisfying. I did say duels, so try to face off against as few enemies as possible. In your offhand, you carry secondary equipment, like a pistol or a crossbow, or use supernatural abilities. The first you're given is Blink, which allows you to cross short distances instantly without being seen or heard. The other abilities include seeing enemies through walls along with their field of vision, embrace the plague and summon a swarm of rats, and even possess animals like rats or fish. Fish honored, anyone? These abilities are exceedingly fun to play with, but must be purchased or upgraded by collecting runes that are scattered throughout Dunwall. Finding these would be difficult without another piece of equipment, a human heart, which might be a tad disturbing, but points out where runes are, along with bone charms, which can be equipped to yield passive bonuses and enhance your playstyle. It's worth noting that the locations of these bone charms remain the same, but what you get is randomized. The heart also talks to you and gives you vague information about the area you're in. Farming villages, bastard daughters, and extra mouths that can't be fed. 
Now, supernatural abilities and stealth are nothing new in video games, but what truly makes this game stand out is the level design. Each of the nine levels in the game are quite big, but at the same time give you plenty of ways to infiltrate and exfiltrate. There are tons of ways to get to your target and leave after the job is done. If you want to bypass stealth entirely, go through the front door and slaughter everyone in your path with the inevitability that alarms will be rung. If you're more stealthy, blink from rooftop to rooftop and enter through a window. Or, in some missions, possess a fish and enter the building through the pipes. In this game, you won't have to complete a mission the same way twice, in basically any area, there will be multiple things to exploit. It's very impressive and something future stealth games should draw inspiration from. Dishonored is all about choosing how to play, but some of its potential was squandered. The game claims that if you choose to be more or less stealthy, future levels will change and your allies will react to you differently. I've played through the game as sneaky as possible and in a brutal fashion, but instances like what the game hints at are rare. Your allies won't treat you much differently if you choose to sneak around guards or give in to your quest for vengeance. These instances only occur closer to the end of the game and they are still too minor. The only dramatic changes that occur are with the final level of the game and with the game's ending. Based on the amount of people you kill, the game will give you one of two endings, which is somewhat disappointing, because since it's done this way, we could have had many different endings that progressively get more dark by how many people you killed. But there are more shortcomings. When I was on my sneaky playthrough, I was really hoping that because of the powers you're given, Dishonored could have ended trial and error in stealth games. Though the game does do a great job of telling you when you're hidden and when you're not, when you are spotted, it's rare that you'll be squaring off against just the few guys who are in the immediate area. In most circumstances, more of their buddies will come running. This gets pretty frustrating since when you play more violently, you can often let your powers do most of the work. But if you play stealthy on your first playthrough, the powers only go so far as guards can be frustrating to deal with when trying to nail the perfect setup. You will often think that you should be unnoticed within the game's logic, and if you make a tiny but crucial mistake, this setup is lost. But if you use blink in a moment like this, the enemy will generally have no idea where you traveled. Since the level design gives you so many areas to retreat to, blink is absolutely essential for making an escape. It's too bad the game doesn't do a good job of teaching you things like this. This is one of those games that can be a bit aggravating on your first playthrough, but gets a lot more fun with each successive playthrough as you use different tricks and learn the level design and missions. As said, there are tons of different ways to get to your objective and escape, but there are also different ways to end your target. Arcane has touted that it is entirely possible to finish the game without killing anyone. This includes your quarry. If you search hard enough, eavesdrop on conversations, or speak to the right people, you can find alternate ways to eliminate your target without spilling blood. Even though I would have liked more non-lethal weapons or abilities beyond the sleep-inducing crossbow darts, the amount of ways to go about your work definitely encourages clever thinking. You can opt to sabotage alarms or even arc pylons or walls of light that would normally kill you, but use a rewire tool to have them turn on enemies. You could use bend time, then use your gun or crossbow to finish off a few enemies in rapid succession. But for me, Blink is the star of the show. It's just fun toying with a group of guards, darting towards one to kill him, and retreating before anyone knows what happened. And repeat. However, if you want to get really creative with this stuff, like some of the trailers have shown, you're going to need to invest a significant amount of runes into upgrading your powers. If you want that bend time upgrade, you're going to have to shift significant resources and give up some helpful skills. And even if you do get a few of these upgrades, you're probably already on your last few levels, so you'll have little time to mess with the possibilities. This highlights the fact that Dishonored is practically begging for a new game plus mode, and it's just not here. But at the same time, it's worth going through the roughly 10 to 12 hour story again and again for many reasons. To check out another ending, take different routes, complete a different side mission, try out a new playstyle, or even attempt that no kill playthrough. I mean, come on, the guards are just following orders, right? Oh. 
Sure, my first playthrough of Dishonored was rather frustrating at times, and I found myself reloading saves at an obnoxious rate, but when you really sink your teeth into it, there is a solid stealth action game here. Dishonored further establishes Bethesda's niche of publishing games with violent but distinct and well-realized worlds. Thanks for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, follow the blog, and check out the Facebook page. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed my future videos.